All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the Fire and EMS uh, Oversight Committee. Um, I'm Ann jones Gatter, District 4, the chair. And then we have uh, uh, Commissioner Cartham, who is a uh, uh, vice chair. <laughs> and we have Mark Till, the county manager, um, Chief Scott Spencer, um, and we have uh, Assistant Chief uh, Scott Zachmeyer, and then we have Courtney Eubanks keeping the minutes. Did I get everybody? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, this is our first um, meeting like this, being streamed, but um, and we're doing it to the we're uh, streaming it to the public because. You can't come to each one of our houses to do this. So uh, this opens it up to the public. And um, now, now that everybody is here, uh, Chief uh, Spencer, I thought you were going to have Jason Milholland here as your guest. No? Uh, I can walk right next door and get him if you would like. Well, you had just stated that he was going to be here for some reason. And um, uh, earlier this morning, we were I, I think that was for the uh, board commission meeting, chair or uh, chairman. Oh, Guy. I thought we were talking about this this meeting. No, no because he 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 didn't get an invite to the uh, uh, commission meeting this morning, so he was just going to use my computer if if there were any questions for him. All right. Well, with that being said, we'll go ahead and start the meeting with the. Uh, with the um, usually we do the approval of the minutes, but we have not had an opportunity to look them over. So I'm going to waive that at this time, if you don't mind, uh, or defer them to a, uh, our next meeting. So um, then we will go on with uh, the old business, and uh, we're going to call on Chief Spencer to talk about the personnel update. Okay, and, and this will be a joint uh, conversation between uh, us and uh, uh, Chief Zatmire will, will chime in as well. Uh, needless to say, uh, the last uh, month or so, uh, the main thing that is uh, taking all of our interest is the uh, COVID-19 issue. So uh, as far as personnel updates, uh, we send a weekly report in. Uh, we have had uh, a few changes. Uh, Chief Zatmire, do you have our current numbers? No, sir, I do not. Okay. Uh, Courtney, do you? Yes. Let me pull my book Okay, we have 10 paramedic openings, one EMT opening, and five firefighter openings. And what was that number on EMTs again? What was the number for the EMTs, Courtney? One. One, okay. And the firefighters was what? Five. Five. Okay. Uh, what is uh, the change? We, since we don't have the figures from the past meeting, uh, has there been any changes in those numbers? Increases? Yeah, we've hired two EMTs since our last meeting. But we haven't lost any of the paramedics or the firefighters we're still breaking up uh, Courtney I'm having a hard time uh, understanding you you're breaking up and there seems to be some kind of feedback I don't know what that is. Yeah, we've had no one leave since last time all right 
so um, chief uh, now we we had a class going at one time but they've already graduated right so uh, on the paramedics we, we we actually had a fire school going on that we suspended due to the COVID crisis. Uh -huh. uh, so that's putting us a little behind in being able to move people from ambulances over to fire trucks to help fill that, uh, those firefighter slots. All right, can I just ask you how, uh, have you had any instances where your personnel has gotten infected in any way uh, with this virus? Uh, we have no positive cases in the fire department. Hallelujah. We, we, have, had, we, we have had some exposures, uh, and they are either they've either been quarantined or isolated, and uh, all but I think two of them, three of them, are back to work now. Very good. Uh, do you, how often do you test them? Well, every morning when they come on duty, uh, we require them to take a, a temperature uh, and we tell them if they are not feeling well before they even leave their house, don't come in. Uh, we're, we, we stop everybody at the door to take their temperature. If they get to feeling bad during the shift, we take their temperature. If they've got an elevated temperature, we send them home uh, and start the process, the quarantine process or isolation process. Um, if, if they, uh, respond to a call and are not wearing their proper PPE, um, uh, and, and get exposed to a, uh, patient that is a, a probable COVID patient, then we quarantine them. Uh, okay. so, so, so we've got policies in place and our guys are doing really, really good at, uh, you know, it, it was a, it was kind of a slow ramp up process uh, because most of the time prior to COVID-19, our guys would wear just gloves when they were, you know, treating somebody. But now now it's mask on everybody. It's uh, face shields. It's gowns uh, because uh, per our medical director, he wants us to treat every encounter as a positive patient. So, okay. Commissioner so, Carthum, do you have any questions from Chief Spencer about that? I do. So, Chief, how are you with morale? Well, uh, I, uh, I'm going to let Chief Zatmeyer kind of chime <laughs> in on that as well. Uh, I've been I've been uh, spending my time between the fire department and the emergency operations center. Uh, so Chief Zatmeyer has been more day to day at the fire department. So uh, Chief Zatmeyer, you want to chime in? Yes, ma'am. I want to start out with uh, uh, telling you how proud, and I know that I've taught the chief how proud we are of the people, men and women of, of the fire department here. Um, this is this is something they haven't seen before. Um, the chief and I have been here, you know, 35 plus years. We haven't seen anything like this before. Our people are stepping up. Um, for the most part, like I said, as the chief said earlier, the uh, all the precautions. Um, it you got to kind of the the young folks think they're ten foot tall and bulletproof, but uh, <laughs> we 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 stretched you know with getting people to coverage. Um, we our sick outs are we have hardly any sick outs. Really, most of the sick outs are the people that are that are being uh, looked at. Um, the morale is good with the people um, as the things have progressed and as we get second, third, fourth week into this, you can tell the morale is, is not what it was when we started. They're tired. Uh, they're worrying. They're worried about what they're carrying home to their, you know, we've got one fellow that stayed at our training center for over a week uh, because he was scared to go home. He did have an exposure, so he was uh, sent out there because he had an, an 80 year old father and a, and a baby. So it's a struggle for our folks. Um, as medical professionals, they realize what they're up against. Um, they're worried about, you know, and we all are, you know, the economy, uh, the, the pandemic itself. So, um, 
but as a whole, I think they are. We're going to do some things to try to get some of the ambulance folks that are running every call some time on the fire truck and some fire truck people on the ambulance trying to swap out and give people a break. But uh, we are definitely monitoring all of our employees, um, and they're doing well. Like I said, I'm, I'm just, you know, there's a lot of things that go through their mind in a day's time or in a shift time. But I'm very, very proud of, of the people, men and women of the Douglas County Fire Department. I will say that. And I would like to echo that as well. Uh, and and what, what these men and women are, are having to, to do, uh, as we get more and more information from CDC, uh, the Board of Health, uh, and, and some of our subject matter experts uh, on this virus, uh, we're having to change policies on the fly. I mean, it's... Uh, it's kind of a, a, a running joke. Uh, you know, it used to be a shift change. You just have to tell them, hey, my truck's got fuel in it, all the equipment's on it, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, but now it's it's a laundry list of, okay, well, here's the policy change from the last time you worked, you know, three days ago. They've added this, this, and this. We don't have to do this anymore, but now we got to do this. So... I, I'm super proud of our people that they have really stepped up and, and they're they're keeping up uh, really well. And uh, like I said, it's it's kind of like drinking uh, water out of a fire hose. Uh, there there's so much information that's coming through, uh, and and we're trying to make sure that the information we're putting out is the most current and the most valid information. So. Uh, well, I think it speaks highly of the dedication of each one of the uh, first responders, but I, it, it also speaks very highly of the training that um, we have in place here in Douglas County, and most of the credit goes to you and your staff. So uh, I thank you for that. But uh, one question, since this is a national emergency, is there any way we could bring back some of the recently retired um, people from the fire department, if not to do anything else, but to volunteer to work the special operations communications? Well, uh, actually, uh, last week, I'm, I, I feel like we've been doing this six months now, but it's uh, really <laughs> been three weeks. But, I know what uh, you mean. So, so either last week or the week before, I actually contacted the Georgia Firefighter Pension Fund to ask that that very question. Uh, could we use EMTs, uh, firefighter EMTs, and it not affect their state pension? They were supposed to have a meeting the very next day and discuss that. And uh, my contact over there when he when I talked to him the next day, he said that the board was favorable to that, uh, and I asked him to send me whatever documentation he had uh, because I, I certainly wouldn't want to mess up somebody's retirement based on just somebody's word. So I was waiting on the documentation. He has yet to send that documentation, so I'm gonna uh, I'll reach out to him again today. But that is a possibility of something we could do is uh, some of the more recent, recently retired folks. Uh, we might be able to hire them back. I know that uh, the uh, emergency management was able to hire back former Deputy Chief uh, Kim Ransom. Uh, she's been a godsend over at the, at the EOC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of that stuff is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking into it as ways to beef up the staffing. Very good, very good. Glad to see you're on that. Um, any other questions, C Commissioner Carthen? One last question is um, in regards to PPE. Do you all have enough or have you anticipated what you would need going into it and, and, and what can we do to help you on that front? Please what? explain what PPE is to the public. Uh, like, Chief, a lot of people yeah. don't understand these. Yes, ma'am. It's uh, personal protective equipment. So that would be our gloves, our face mask, our face shields, our uh, gowns and Tyvek suits that we wear, things that protect us, uh, basically. Um, and, and Commissioner Carthen, to answer your question, uh, 
No, ma'am, we don't have enough uh, because we don't know how long this thing is going to last. Uh, so what what we have done is we've we've started a plan B and a plan C and a plan D uh, uh, to try to continue to, to uh, restock our inventory. Uh, most everybody's in the same boat we are. Uh, the the normal vendors that supply us this equipment, uh, they're overwhelmed. Uh, and so the stuff we do get more than likely are not uh, will not be a full order. So like if we ordered, uh, you know, a thousand gloves, we may only get 500 gloves. Uh, however, we've got several, we've reached out to several places uh, to see if they could help us. Uh, every week we put in an order from the strategic, strategic National Stockpile, which is a federal resource uh, that we get. Uh, we, we've gotten two shipments for Fire and EMS uh, so far, and they were not full shipments. Uh, so in the meantime, what we did is we reached out to uh, one of our local companies, Medline, uh, that uh, has a manufacturing facility here in the county. And uh, what they actually manufacture are the uh, adult diapers. Uh, oh, yes, Medline. Mm -hmm. But Medline also manufactures uh, the N95 mask uh, and all the other stuff. So uh, we, re we reached out to our local and they said, well, they didn't have anything, but let, let them see what they could do. And uh, last week they, they came through with a, uh, I think it was like a thousand face shields and uh, several, several boxes of gloves, uh, some, some N95 masks that we need. So th that, that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're working all our angles uh, to try to make sure that we uh, have what we need. Uh, something else that we're doing that we started yesterday is uh, we're actually decontaminating our N95 mask. Uh, and by doing that, we're, uh, we're extending the life of those. So uh, it, it's quite an ordeal to do it, uh, but our training and hazmat folks have come up with a way to do it. It's, it's been approved by by the uh, by the CDC, so uh, we're following their guidelines still. So it's uh, like I said, it's a challenge, but we're uh, our biggest need right now are are the Tyvek suits, uh, and and those are the the white suits that you see the the folks wearing on on TV. Uh, we had a, a a fair amount of those to start with because we had that left over from the uh, Ebola mm -hmm. scare several years ago. But, but we're running through those uh, uh, at a pretty brisk clip. Uh, we, we've got one person assigned, her, her primary job is to keep up with our PPE on, okay. you know, on hand, what we need, uh, when we start getting critical shortages, uh, you know, what we can do. Uh, so, we're trying to stay on top of it uh, best we can, uh, but we're always, you know, willing to to accept the stuff that uh, folks may be willing to donate. One thing about the N95 mask, uh, we have found that about 40% of them uh, are counterfeit. Uh, so we're having to be a little cautious about, uh, you know, uh, you know, everybody and their brother seems to now be a manufacturer of N95 mask. Mm. Uh, so we're getting a lot of emails about, hey, we can sell you these masks cheap and they're good. And, but uh, so, like I said, we've got a subject matter expert uh, that we work with uh, and she is top notch and uh, does a lot of research for the government. Uh, so we're, we're using her expertise. I'm glad. And, and one of the things, and I don't know where I read this or saw this, but uh, some of the technical institutes 
were donating um, equipment. Um, PPE mask and those types of things and gowns and those types of things to first responders. So I'm pretty sure that's already on her list to, to tap them since most places are closed. Um, now, but um, Yes, ma'am. Actually, our health occupations classes at the, uh, the high schools, mm -hmm. they donated uh, what they had. Uh, we've worked nice. with the school board uh, for some cleaning supplies for the stations. Mm -hmm. Chief, we just got it. We got a, uh, a shipment today from McMaster Car too, with N95s. Awesome. We awesome. I don't I don't know how many yet, but uh, we got a, a shipment in from them today. Okay. So, so that, those were, those were my two main concerns. I, I always think about that um, when it when it comes to to you all. You know, having taken a ride, just just to, you know, that that concerned me. So I just wanted to to make sure since we were on this call that I had an opportunity to to ask you about that and, and to see how you know. Don't hesitate to reach out to to us to see you know what what we can do, you know, and I'm glad you said Medline because that's one of the companies right here in, in Douglas County. Um, I know we also have ResMed and, and a couple of others. So I'm glad to know that they are partnering um, with with us uh, during this um, pandemic. So, um, but that we've was all, also, thank you. We've also had citizens too that are making the uh, covers for our N95s. We've had a, um, a mother of one of our employees. We've had a couple of church groups that have also hand sewn the covers to go over our N95 mask. So we've had that happen too. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Doc, um, is it Dr. Gilchrist this morning with the senior services? They've made several masks and they're going to, they were going to turn them over to Jason uh, sometime today. If you'll give him a heads up, I thought he was going to be at the meeting. So uh, I didn't say anything, but um, several of their, um, participants down there the senior center they've made some of the mask uh the cloth mask i know these aren't the the kind that some that, that y'all use but other people would use or somebody in the the office would use uh at 911 center and places like that so just give him a heads up that she's got a, a surprise for him <laughs> a gift to it <laughs> Commissioner uh, Guider, uh, Jason is in the room. He's uh, sitting at the other end of the table. <laughs> we yeah. saw his hand. <laughs> uh, so we're, uh, he's listening in anyway. Okay. Um, well, it's good to see that y'all are being innovative in, uh, with your supplies and everything. I did not know you're the first one I've heard say that you could actually reuse those nine those uh mat certain the mass that you use by cooking them <laughs> in a low temperature oven for an hour so that's kind of neat to know that so uh but good thinking outside the box and um uh, i just thank all of our uh, partners in the community that's stepping up to help too um the second thing on the agenda is the billing process. And Chief, I'm going to turn that over to you too. Okay. Uh, the the, uh, the we actually have two two projects going on. Uh, one we're actually going to meet uh, Thursday of this week. That's our fire station eleven project, uh, where we have the uh, the septic tank problem and the driveway uh we're, we're going to do a virtual meeting with the uh, uh civil engineering firm thursday and uh make sure they understand the scope of work that we we need them to do so that'll be this thursday you uh, haven't moved the septic over because you're going to have to add some to the driveway right for the engines to come in and out well currently the, the septic system that's there uh is failing so okay. so we're, we're gonna have to replace it anyway and so it made sense to us to do it all at one time instead of piecemeal it so that's that's one of the reasons we're meeting thursday is to make sure that the the uh, engineers understand so they can design the driveway the septic system and the retention pond that'll all be part of this project all right and this is on 92 north 
Yes, ma'am. Station 11. A lot of people don't know what the station number is, but um, uh, that's on 92 North, right above where the bypass is coming in. Right. And then uh, I'm going to let uh, Deputy Chief Zachmeyer talk about our metal building at the uh, training complex. That was our other project. All right. So we, we originally bid uh, the project out. All the, all the, uh, the estimates or the quotes came in uh, much higher than, than what we thought uh, they should. So we came back when we went back to the designer architect and did some creative stuff. Uh, we are ready now to re-advertise that again that's been given to purchasing. They're working on all the fine print and we're going to send it back out. Uh, some of the things, you know, we, we've downscaled some of the stuff. The size of the building's the same, uh, but the concrete around it, not get as much concrete, uh, cut back on some of the uh, electrical stuff that we had put in it, um, things like that to try to reduce the price to get it within the price range of what we're able to spend. So, yeah, uh, and this is a splosh project. Yes, ma'am. It's a uh, splosh, O2 splosh. Right. Okay. It's all, it's, you know, we, we combined and put everything in one bucket that we had left over in the O2 splosh to finish it out and we're doing this building. So we have a set dollar amount that we're dealing with and we're trying to get the building within that dollar amount. All right. So you just changed the scope of it a little bit. Yeah, we changed the scope of work, did some value engineering, th those kind of things, and hopefully we can get it down to um, a little bit closer to what we had originally yeah. planned to spend. And uh, when do you think, when do you anticipate bidding this job out? Uh, not real sure. I'll check with Dawn and see. Um, she has everything now. She's working on it. We had, she had some questions for the architect. We answered those questions last week. So, you know, given time, she, I'm sure she's busy too. But uh, whenever she's ready to put it out, then we're ready. So probably within the month, do you think? I would, I would think, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Carthen, you got any questions about that? Um, Commissioner Carthen, it's, the screen seems to be freezing up a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, move on to the status of the splash vehicles. Um, we have one on order, do we not? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll take that also. Um, the, the 19 stuff, we've got the, uh, we've already took delivery on the staff vehicles. We've already taken delivery on the ambulance and we're waiting on the fire truck. Um, generally, when we buy something from uh, a manufacturer, we have a midpoint visit where we go look at the truck when it's half done uh, and then we do the final inspection. And this particular time, it's it's Pierce Manufacturing in, in Wisconsin. Um, we are not going to get to go up there uh, this time. Um, they sent some pictures, and if I can do this, <laughs> I'm, I'm no techno wizard, so y'all bear with me. But uh, all right, this is. Are you seeing anything? Uh, it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay, these are some pictures I got from Pierce. Um, if you can see them. Can you click on them and enlarge them? All right. Are they enlarge now? No. No. You're not seeing any of this? Yeah, we're, we're, we're seeing the pictures. We see, we, see the, we see the equipment. We, they okay. just smile. <laughs> All right. Well, these are some of the uh, the pictures. Let me try to see if I can get it. Does that help any? No. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. But they're, they're, um, they're, they're pictures of the truck that's in process now. And if, if uh, I can email you these same pictures, um, what it shows. I what I was looking at. So there's no <laughs> need well, to send them to me. Yeah, it's, it shows. The truck is about three quarters of the way done. It's not quite there yet. They're estimating delivery to us April 22nd. So it, it's it's uh, all they, well, I say that, that it delivered to Georgia April 22nd. And then the group that we buy from, 10-8 Fire Equipment, 
um, they're near Macon, and they have some finishing touches to put on it. So it's probably a, a couple of weeks after that, and then we'll have delivery of this year's fire truck. And this uh, is a pumper truck. Yes, ma'am. It's a pumper truck. It's uh, Pierce Manufacturing, Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, really good truck. Um, we've started on our 2020 stuff already. Uh, our fleet director, Tim Jordan, has got, uh, we've already got the specs turned in for the fire truck for 2020. Uh, he's about to finish up the amulet specs. Uh, Courtney, I think he sent those to you to get typed up. Um, and then the two staff vehicles for this year. Uh, uh, let me doing. stop you right there because I think at our last meeting we talked about instead of another pumper truck, weren't we talking about replacing the ladder truck that was in, involved in the accident on I-20? And we were going to get um, uh, Mark Teal, he, he, who was not at the meeting last time, he was going to look at the figures and see what money's were available to re to go toward replacing the ladder truck. Actually, I, I hadn't been informed of that. I didn't know that this actually, the fire truck for 2020 has already been advertised and we've already um, had the bid opening for it. Yeah. Co Commissioner Guider, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the 2020 truck was already uh, in the bid process the, the last time we talked, uh, we, we were looking at maybe 2021 doing the, uh, because our, our money would free up because this is our tightest year. So, okay, so Mark's going to look at the revenues or the monies available to replace the ladder truck in 2021. That was part of the, uh, I don't have the minutes, but I remember us saying we, we had to wait and hear back from Mark on the revenues. So, yeah. So, Madam Guider, we'll have to check. We'll have to check the cash flow year four, which is this year, is one of the really tight years. Um, so, we will have to check the cash flow, and then we can check the uh, reimbursements from the cities as well um, to see how that goes. But you know, we've got the splice. You know, the splash revenues were expecting a big hit, but we don't know what that hit is. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have to look at the cash flow and see what we can work out. All right. Uh, I don't think we had a ladder truck originally planned, did we? Uh, maybe not till the end of the splash. I, I think but it would be in year five. We're, we're having to push it up. Yeah. Yeah. There is another one for Station Nine, uh, but yes. I don't think there was a another one for the county wide, like for the existing stations. Correct, Chief. That's correct, sir. Yeah. But there's one. There's Station Nine. We don't nine. have a fair one now. Uh, we only have the one, right? No, we, we, we've got two trucks. We, we have two ladder trucks. Uh, but we do not have a reserve ladder truck. So if, if, if something happens to one of them, uh, th then we would be. Uh, In bad shape. Yeah. Okay. So we, we can talk about this later, but, uh, and we'll have to wait and see how the revenues come in on the splash for sure. Uh, but um, I think the ladder truck was something that we talked about uh, was a dire need to replace because of the when it was totaled by a tractor trailer on I-20 so right and and what we do have the money that we got from the insurance company uh, uh, Jennifer Hallman has has set that aside uh, and uh, Matt Laverne was working on uh, another avenue to see if they could not generate some more money uh, but but he has not reported back on uh to me how uh how that went so i'll try to find that out okay well we can table this till our next meeting and everything uh is that all that we need to talk about on the splash vehicles everything in other words everything's been ordered yes ma'am um 
everything for 2019 has been delivered except for the fire truck and 2020 the fire truck has been ordered uh the ambulance and the two staff cars we're in the process of ordering those now all right uh any questions uh commissioner carthen just raise your hand when you because <laughs> i can see you because <laughs> We don't have that many people on the uh, yeah. study. <laughs> no, just, just want to know that the, the bid opening did happen. And so um, our purchasing meeting is in a few weeks. And um, so that should be coming to you fairly soon with who the lowest bidders were and, and what the outcome of that. So at our next meeting, you'll definitely have okay. the information. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, the radio system. I uh, know it's up and running, that which is very good. <laughs> and uh, Chief, you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, we're we're very pleased with the radio system. Uh, it is up and running. Uh, it went online uh, March seventeenth. Uh, we've we've had very few issues with it since it's been up and running. Uh, what issues we do? Uh, the actual bid price was fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety-eight thousand, I think. Mm -hmm. So we, we basically saved a million dollars. But like I said, that that goes towards the contingency in case there were issues we needed to 
address. And then uh, throughout the contract, as we've been working through this, uh, there have been some changes made, uh, and we got credit for some of those changes. Right. We've got enough credit that uh, we've paid for the uh, deficits uh, up to this point out of our credits that we made. So uh, I, I think uh, between Motorola and Douglas County, we, we've done a pretty good job of uh, managing that budget. That's very good. good very good news, is it not, Commissioner Carthen? <laughs> And Mark, <laughs> who are under their under their uh, you know in line with budget. So, okay, uh, some of the screens are freezing up. Um, Commissioner Carthen, your screen on on my end is freezing up. So if I interrupt you, it's not on purpose. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, is that all we need to know about the radio system? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. The last discussion item is the COVID-19 update. Um, I don't know what we haven't covered, but I'm going to let you cover that. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, the, the COVID-19, uh, we really started working on this back, uh, I, I think, the, the first notice we got was like maybe back on March the 5th. So uh, we've been working on it ever since, uh, trying to anticipate the needs. Uh, we've been working with public health. Uh, we've been working with uh, our EMA, uh, with Jason. Um, and like I said, it's uh, it's an ever-changing thing. Uh, you know, as we, we get daily reports on the numbers. Uh, currently, I think we're at a hundred and five, five uh, in uh, confirmed cases in Douglas County with five deaths. Uh, we, we get updates twice a day from Department of Health. Uh, Kim Ransom uh, post them to uh, to a website or not to a website, but to a, a page so that we can review them. Uh, GEMA sends out a uh, daily situation report, uh, and uh, it, it's it's been a challenge for sure. Uh, I, I know uh, th there's not a whole lot of full night sleeps going on uh, for uh, Jason and Zach Meyer and myself. We're uh, we're pretty much on it. We're eat eat drinking and living. The, you know the, the the COVID stuff. So, uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, as far as our folks getting infected, we, we've been very fortunate. Uh, like I say, I can't say enough about public health. Uh, that they they've done a, an outstanding job. They really have. Uh, pandemics are a uh, they're a different animal. Uh, Chief, are you involved in finding a s testing site for the public health? Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, Jason just left, uh, and, and I'm fixing to go meet him when we get through this meeting. Uh, Hunter Park is going to be our drive-through test site. Uh, so we're doing site surveys out there now to make sure that it's going to, the traffic flow is going to work the way it needs to. Uh, he's meeting PD and uh, the Sheriff's Department out there. Uh, uh, City Public Works is going to uh, work with them to uh, get sand to fill the sandbags where the tents will be, you know, to hold them down. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have a, we'll have the side up and running by X day. I don't know what X day is yet, but we should know this afternoon what, what the game plan is. But the testing is still limited, right? Y uh, yes, ma'am. You, you'll, you'll still have to be referred by a doctor. Uh, uh, or be in that, uh, my understanding is, or be in that group, uh, you know, that shows symptoms. Uh, and that's the key is, you know, if you're not showing symptoms, uh, you're probably not going to get tested. Uh, and, and that's, that, that's prudent, uh, 
use of resources there? Well, I think uh, some of that can change as uh, the new tests go online. Uh, I know Abbott's uh, got a test that will take about just a few minutes to get the results, but they've got to manufacture them and get them out to uh, all the uh, counties and the cities and the states and whatever, the hospitals. So uh, it's going to take a while to get them out there. But it, right mm -hmm. now, you do have to have a doctor's uh, re recommendation. I, I think you have to have a number, uh, uh, some kind of a certificate number. That, that's my understanding. Uh, I, Commissioner I Carter, not, you said I'm, something about that this morning in the commissioner's meeting. You, about you, a meeting. I, I have not walked through the process yet uh, to, to see exactly, uh, but it's my understanding, yes, you'll have to, you'll get a, a voucher basically that you'll have to show and if you don't have that voucher then you'll have to get that voucher before you're tested okay um and in the, uh yeah so i this to mark or to um Sackmeyer or to you chief Spencer. uh there is um a can we look at somewhere like the mall, somewhere where there really is space for cars? And, you know, not that Hunter Park isn't a good location. I, I think it's a, a, a good starting point. At this point, any point is a good starting point. I think security has a lot to do with it, too, because they have to lock everything up. Uh, so the, there, there are several considerations when, when you pick a site. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, we did a dispensing pod. Uh, on Douglas Boulevard uh, back in 2005, I think it was, uh, or 2015, what, uh, 2015, I think it was, we actually did an exercise uh, and it worked well, but that's that, that dispensing pod is different than a testing pod. Uh, the dispensing pod was actually once we get a vaccine or once we get medication, we can open up and, and do a because you're just going to be handing out medications at a distance. Have several sites for that. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, and the, the other thing is the mall being private property and the parks being public property. Uh, I, I think there's some issues there. Uh, Liability. Uh -huh. And uh, as, as Commissioner Guider said, uh, security is one of the, the main concerns. Well, that's all that was on the agenda. Does anybody have anything they want to add? Well, Chief, I just want to add that um, we are praying for the staff. Just going to stay faithful and pray. Commissioner Carthen, you, you were breaking up terribly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real bad. Uh, but I, I heard the word pray, so. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but, um, you know, someone said that it, this has been, I think it was you, Chief, that said this has been a great challenge. But let me tell you, y'all have stepped up to that challenge. Y'all have met that challenge. And on behalf of Douglas County, the commissioners and you know every person out here we appreciate what y'all do and the sacrifice and the commitment that you have so uh we just thank you and we we are all praying for you i guarantee you that well we certainly appreciate that and, and truly all the, the the credit goes to our whole team it's not just one or two it, it's our whole team and uh commissioners and, and, and Mark, you know, y'all are part of that team as well. And we appreciate the support y'all are giving us and the, the leeway y'all are giving us to, to make the decisions we need to make to, uh, to try to get ahead of this thing. And, and we appreciate y'all. So, um, if there's no other business, um, has anybody got any other business? <laughs> Since there's a delay, I, I keep waiting on y'all a little bit, especially you, uh, Commissioner Carthen, your your reception's not very good. So, But anyway, with um, nothing else on the agenda, we will uh, call this meeting 
adjourn. Thank each and every one of y'all. Thank, Thank you. All. you.